welcome back to Timo's TV and today I was kind of thinking about going over the sprint car I seen it didn't have the rear tires on it and I thought I'd just kind of point out some of the you know what makes a non-wing sprint car a non-wing sprint car okay so let's start with it's a torsion bar car it's got four torsion bars So that makes it kind of ride around like a truck. If you've ever driven a straight axle pickup truck, like an old one, that's a lot like what this thing kind of drives like. And then you got that big steering wheel, like remember that old truck just kind of wandered around and you kind of had to like roll it and just kind of like chase it all the time? Same thing here. These things uh, have so much slop in the steering because between the gear going there, there to here, all these Heims have play and then just to get to the right front to steer it, it all has to go through all of that to get to here, to transfer over to here. So this thing tends to be not as nice and straight as your street car. So like I was saying, it has a straight front axle. This radius rod and these two radius rods and a pan hard bar is all that holds the whole front end in the car. The shocks are hanging on there, but they, they're not holding anything in the car. Um, so definitely some old school technology um, in the back This is what they call a W-link and the theory on a W-link is a 14 inch W-link with 7 inch straps This pickup point goes up and down vertically instead of in an arc um, But when in a arc if it gets in an arc it binds, you know, so moving this up and down changes where your center is instant center on the car so ultimately this watson's link or w link is your roll center on the rear end so if you raised the the watson's link it would free the car up if you lowered it it would hook the car up and it, it pretty much goes the same with the front pan hard bar and this goes on almost any car when the cars sit in their level the pan hard bar should be in line with this if the car turns too good, you can get it up above the roll center and that'll help help the car from pinning the right front. Or if it's not turning good enough, you can lower it below the roll center and it'll actually, you know, stick the right front. Um, I just tried to leave it level. You can see it's just a little bit above level here, but when the car gets into the corner, it's going to end up right at level. On the front shocks are typically rebound adjustable. So uh, you know, your typical right front shock will be 75 pounds of compression and then you'll be able to adjust from like 20 to like 120 on rebound. On this one, it's a little bit softer, so we'd be more like 50 pounds of compression on the left front, but we'd have a lot more rebound, so maybe like 80 to 250 on rebound so you can tie this corner down so that it just doesn't try to wheelie but we have cockpit adjustments so I can adjust that in the car. Um, you can't really see, but this radius rod, you can move up and down. And what that allows it to do is it moves the bird cages forward. And um, in theory, that's supposed to give you forward drive. So moving the radius rod up or down helps with that. So right there, well, once again, we're about level on the left rear radius rod. And if, if the track was really hooked up, you would go down on it. And if it was really slick, you would go up on it. If you go up on it, it allows the bird cage to go forward quicker. If you go down on it, it doesn't really let the left rear bird cage transfer very quick. And that goes for the other side as well. Uh, so the bird cages, typically have a couple different holes so you see this hole there so you can move the pickup closer to the ax center of the axle and that'll actually make it react faster all the wing cars have these pickup points as tight as they can because they want them to react as fast as possible typical right rear shock be like 80 pounds of compression 100 pounds of rebound um, this one has both compression and rebound so I can change a little bit of everything um, it doesn't look like this car has an adjustment on the right rear 
uh, radius rod, but if you move that up, it would help with some forward drive. We don't mess with that a whole lot on the non-wing cars or the wing cars. I guess I shouldn't say that on the wing cars. What else do we got? So this is how we crank weight. So when we start the night out, we put blocks underneath it, and then we just set these, and then that basically just gives us neutral ride heights on the back of the car. Um, a typical non-wing car you would do, you know, a half in the right rear, a half out of the left rear, just to give the thing some even tilt. Um, and that keeps you, if you do even tilt, that keeps you from loading cross weight. So if you were off the blocks and you just took a half out of the left side and put a half in the right side, you know, the thing would just be flat off the blocks with tilt. Okay, that's how I would free the, that's how I would start the car. Well, then if the thing was really heavy, I would do double that. I'd do a turn in the right side and a turn out of the left side, okay? If I was somewhere where I needed to do like, let's say I wanted to stick the right rear or it was a track that had a lot of circle in it, you know, it was a D shape, it was a big circle. I might X in some right rear weight, okay? So, by doing that, I'd block the car, I'd do my half in, half out, and then I would do a half in the left front and a half in the right rear. And that'll give me another turn. Or if you just take a half out of the right front, put a half in the left front, put a half in the right rear, take a half out of the left rear, then you X in two, two turns there. So that's where you start getting into the the magic of setting a car up. You know, when you start trying to screw left rear into the car or right rear. Right rear sticks the right rear. Left rear weight is like a dragster and it, it drag races off the corner and gets you down the, the straightaway. You can see we have a ton of tires in the trailer and that's because stagger is important and wheel offset is also important. So I think this is a five off wheel and this is a four off wheel. This wheel is not offset as much and so that frees the car up. So we start on a four off and then we go to a five off and then maybe a six off where like the wing guys might start on a six off and go to a seven off. And it just gets, when you change the offset, it just moves this center in to the center of the wheel and that sticks the right rear because you go from here to here to here and it loads the outside of the wheel. So stagger and wheel offset and wheel location is also crucial on these cars. That was kind of a crash course on, you know, sprint car technology and, you know, like some basics. Thanks for watching Team S TV as always. I better get my suit on and get in the race car because I, I, we're at Lawrence Perg and, and it is go time. Thanks for watching. Back in the studio talking about what's going on this weekend. This weekend we are racing at I-55 with the Extreme Outlaw Midget Series along with the World of Outlaws. Oh yeah. Big weekend on hand. In the RMS Racing 7X with the Engler Ford can't wait to get that thing on a big outdoor track. This is the first time we get that thing outdoor and see what it's got against all the big dogs. Really excited about that. Thanks for watching Team Mez TV as always.